Hi there guys, today's video I'll be talking about the recent Ross Kemp documentary about an addict who lost 127 grand in under 30 minutes. Now I'll leave the link to the video below, but it describes in the video that Britain is the biggest uh, regulated online gambling market in the world that it has, and it's worth £5.4 billion. That's a lot of dough, isn't it? But it ruins a lot of lives, this online gambling. Unlike, say, drug problem or an alcohol problem, it's quite visible, isn't it? But gambling, you're not going to know if someone's in massive debt over gambling or not. If they're getting in debt over being a crack addict, I'm sure it's going to be quite visible, same as alcohol. And that's why it's so dangerous, this is. So um, I'll just let you guys know first, my ebook's available with the course on Amazon now. The link's down below for that. So I'll crack on with the video. It's so easy now to do your nads with the whole load of sites available now, whether it be apps on your phone or a tablet and that. It's a bigger problem now than it's ever been because you think about it, casinos shut at a certain time as do bookies, but you can always go on your phone at any time. And that's why it's so dangerous. So in this video, I'll be giving you my views on the Ross Kemp video. Sorry, the Ross Kemp documentary. It was on ITV, by the way. And also my experiences of uh, two friends in particular that I have. There are several others, but these two are a good example of this. Now in the video, Ross talks about Alex. Um, he's a 35-year-old teacher, so he, like, he's no idiot. He resorted, he had to go off the grid, isolating himself, like no m mobile phone, no car, and he even entered gambling rehab. Friday nights, he finds it, he dreads Friday nights because of the following Saturday, you know. We're all sports lovers, most of us, and don't really have a problem with it. I've had my problems before, which I'll explain later on. But, I mean, this is no joke. It ruins lives. Uh, so, around 3pm, of course, on a Saturday, you can imagine, he's, he's, he's he, he finds it such a struggle. And Alex even said that he's, he's never got in a fight before. He don't take drugs. He drinks rarely. So, I mean, you get the picture. He's a responsible kind of guy he's not no loose cannon sort of guy that you'd expect to be losing 127 grand in 30 minutes so what he was explaining it's very easy to be drawn into sports betting that's how he started off sports betting football that's the usual route with a bloke it's the most popular sport all in all for blokes and then he started getting into casinos of course like i mentioned earlier casinos and bookies close so say you was an addict like this 20 years ago You'd still have problems, but it'd be a lot harder to do your nads then than it is now, because you can just pull your phone out, lying in bed half asleep, and lose 127 grand in 26 minutes, like he done here. So <clears throat> he won 107, 127 grand in one weekend, and he lost it in 26 minutes playing roulette. And he said that he lost that in between 10 and 11 spins. He even started borrowing money off of friends and family. He lost a lot of friends and relationships from this. He was engaged at one point and he doesn't see his daughter now. Um, the gambling just simply came first. Um, <clears throat> I've also had my problems before. A lot of you that follow me will know that I've been gambling since 1988. Um, I've done one that several times. I've been, while I'm a disciplined full time match better in Arbor, I've I did start off as a gambler in the late 80s. I remember once, before I worked in the racing industry, I, was, I had a job as an insurance clerk. I think I was 18 or something like that. I walked in the betting shop on my lunch break. I was just got paid. I got paid £600 a month or something silly like that. And um, I walked in there. There's this horse called Gaetti. I remember it vividly because if you lose £200 back in 1990 or 1989, whenever it was, you remember it. Plus, I paid the tax on it because there was betting tax back in those days. And it was ridden by a bloke called Lester Piggott, who's an infamous jo jockey, and he'd only recently come out of prison. So I think it might have been early 1990 or something. So anyway, I lost £220. Uh, the horse, by the way, got done in a short head, which, if you're not familiar with horse racing, is six inches or so. So obviously, I felt like rubbish, you know. After work, I was so fuming because I thought, how am I going to get by? I ended up losing my entire wages in that day. I mean, I was 18, so I've got an excuse. I was around 18. But, you know, I had to struggle and borrow to survive. So I'm, I'm a living proof that it can happen to anyone because I'm quite a responsible gambler. Even though I turn over millions of pounds a year, 
I mean, I've got another mate <clears throat> who used to rent my flat at mate's rates, and he just won £500. He was on having breakfast in Weatherspoons once, and he had £500 in his hand. And I said to him, why don't you pay me two or three months' rent or whatever it was back then? He was looking all witty, like he wanted to go back to wherever he got his money from. I couldn't stop him, you know, he's a grown adult, but he went, I spoke to him an hour later on the phone, and he'd lost all that money, unbelievably. And the, the other guy that I mentioned, who's a friend, um, he he messaged me, by the way, that I posted on Twitter. This is, a, by the way, for those who bet regular, this is a good way of mug punting. He wanted me to put £20 on for him, on this horse that got beaten, by the way. But this is a perfect example of how to mug punt without losing any money from it. I mean, the guy has got betting problems, but they're not so bad that I wouldn't not allow him £20. So he lets me use... He lets me control his account so he doesn't go berserk right away. This was the same guy, by the way, who won 22 grand on Frankie Di Tori um, fourfold because he cashed out on this bet on the screen. Uh, but he's a massive mug punter. He's, he's probably lost that over the years, that 22 grand. He went for a mortgage once and got declined in, I think it was year 2013, when the bank underwriters scrutinised his account and it was littered with betting transactions everywhere. So he went away, controlled his betting, reapplied a year later, <clears throat> and got accepted. That was with Barclays, by the way. So this same guy here is self-excluded with several bookmakers, one being Bet365, which is, I'm pretty gutted about, really, for obvious reasons. And I think he's self-excluded for several years. And I was saying to him, no, you should have spoke to me before you did that. But um, the other guy is totally self-excluded. He goes to Gamblers Anonymous. They meet up and that. It might seem ridiculous to some of out there. But like I said before, gambling problem is not a visible thing. You still do your bollocks just like you would if you was a crackhead or a severe alcoholic. It still has that impact in your life because your family suffer. You lose friends because you're borrowing money and you can't pay it back. It's the same kettle of fish. It has that same effect. So while you might be thinking, God, that's drastic doing that. Some people have to do it. And that's why Alex in the video, he had to like isolate himself. Apparently there's half a million people self-excluded last year from bookmakers. Um, both the friends I said mentioned are both self-excluded. Alex has got the right mindset though. Because in the documentary, he said that he will always class himself as an addict. Even in 30 years time, if he's not even betted in the last 30 years, he'll still class himself as an addict. So I do consider that he has recovered somewhat, although he's identified that he'll never be fully recovered. I used to work with recovering alcoholics years ago. I was going to become a social worker before I got too heavily involved in betting. And um, they never recover. You know, once you're an addict, that, that's it. And the worst people who think, who go into rehab and that and think, oh, I'm better now. You'll never be better. It's a mental thing, and you can't sort it out. With mo in most cases, not all. So I mean, with this gambling problem, I've experienced both sides of the gambling front. I've seen my friends ruining their lives. I've ruined my life when I was younger. I still do it now with casino. Like I'll chase on casino, which is why high risk casino don't suit me. I've even chased when I've made mistakes on match betting and arping. Although I can control it, I've never totally gone full reptile and lost a whole lot I've lost say under a thousand pound which is not really that relative compared to what I was making in the months before that so it weren't it didn't really harm me but when you start losing a lot of money it really does harm you so I mean I hope you found this video helpful this is one of the reasons I love smashing bookies now by the way the website is coming soon I've had serious delays I've changed the developer I've even been accused of uh faking this website here to make a mailing list is the tweet here that i got sent and i'm thinking man this there's easier ways to make a mailing list surely i mean there's a couple of thousand people joined the mailing list in the last six months or so but that's not even my objective because as you guys on the mailing list would know i've not even sent one single email out so i'm not too bothered about mailing lists this was the objective of this was to let you guys know so as regards the ebook on Amazon, I've got a narrated version of this. It's a video version. It contains five hours of um, 
a video. Um, I know it's quite scary, five hours of video, but it hopes to provide a clearer perspective of the content in the ebook. Uh, there's a very clear IE snare guide in here. There's a little run through here of it. Uh, it gives you all the steps because I've seen online IE snare guides. They're a little bit vague and sometimes don't work. And hopefully this will be a lot clearer because not everyone knows IT out there. And when some people post the pictures on there, they expect you to know what run as administrator means and stuff like that. And not everyone knows that. So I've made that very clear on there. Also, um, on this guide, I run through all the aspects of match betting. As you can see, here's the ebook, 4.99, or the narrated five-hour guide. Personally, not because it costs more. I think that there's a lot more explanatory. So if we go into this, um, it will show you all the chapters on here. Will it read more? So the chapters list is what is match betting, exchanges, fractions of decimals. Then it gets a bit meatier. It goes into your bankroll, what to do when you're losing, how to lose all your money from the fixed odds into betting exchanges, how that's a fallacy, how I found that before, the types of offers, which sign-ups to do first, how I prioritise them. Uh, the types of offers, that's more for a newbie. Combined liability, there's a video on that. So there's over 15 embedded videos in this. Even on the narrated version, it shows the embedded videos plus with my chat on top of that. Gubbed, my opinions on that and the experiences I've had on being gubbed over the last 20 years. I think I was one of the first people to be gubbed um, back in the 90s off of Betvictor that I know of anyway. I remember it vividly. I was on £6.25 stakes, which is quite good compared to Bet365. Mug punting, mug staking and mug depositing. And that's quite interesting really because a lot of people would think about mug punting but they don't think about mug staking or mug depositing which although this is all theorised it does make sense when you're doing say a William Hill money back or the second offer instead of taking staking £10 all the time even put 11 in there or something or um, if you've got it on a boost 15 mug depositing if it's bet 5 get 20 don't put 5 in there put more because the likelihood is that you're going to need to deposit more anyway so you're saving time but that goes into it and then there's the best part arbitrage explained from an ex-pro arbor being me i used to absolutely love arbing um i don't do it so much now but i always do it every day still uh best was guaranteed how it's underestimated my bog approaches each way and extra places that shows a video of me like laying an extra place live dutching explained uh, how I started dutching in the 1990s before betting exchanges, withdrawals, the obvious thing, how to approach them, how it's stupid, unless you're on PayPal or Nutella or something, it's stupid to withdraw like on a on a Thursday night or a Friday because then your money's trapped in there more than likely on a debit card. Mistakes, how I handle them. This is a big psychological one. This is one of the most important things, guys, when you make mistakes because you're going to make mistakes and how you deal with them if you're if you've got a problem like the people have in this video then it can result in massive problems and i'll explain that in there because i've i've done my bollocks before chasing uh will match betting ever end i'm not going to go into that because it's quite contentious i don't think it will ever end but i think things are just continue getting worse yep there weren't two ups around years ago yep there weren't boosts around years ago yep there weren't a lot of these things like that but all in all i think it's worse Casino, admittedly I'm no casino expert, my brief views on that. Staying secure online, that's a two-step two, two, step, two step verification guide. So just like the IE snare guide, that 2SV guide breaks it down just in layman's terms because not everyone out there is on 2SV. I recommend it to everyone, not just for betting accounts, for everything, your emails, your Amazon, your every whole shebang, you know, because they can get in somehow and they like to get in the hackers this is they can get in through your emails they're getting in everywhere so if you can just keep them out then that secure things more and lastly i.e snare which i hope is a clear guide so like i say 15 subsections in this first one the match bet inside and there's a lot of words in there 19,000 words or something like that so i hope you find it helpful guys the thumbnail could have been done a little bit better than that but I put a lot of work into that and there will be more complicated video um, e-videos coming out on Amazon in future.
Hope you see you on the website soon, guys. Good luck.